What is up guys, Sharpen here and today I'm giving you a face rig tutorial. Yes, I gave you a face rig, now I'm giving you a face rig tutorial, as this is still the most voted option on the voting poll. I still gotta give you that. So if you're new to the channel, subscribe now and click the bell to get notified. And also, show me some love! Now all jokes aside, let's start with the tutorial. So today we're going to pretend that this cube is our head. But before I start anything serious, I can't expect you to know about the alpha glitch and how it works. If you don't, you can click the eye in the corner now, because you need to see this first. It's very important to, know, to understand how this works, as I'm not explaining it in this video. Let's just start. I want to start with the eyes. We gotta make the eyes visible. Let's add a surface, call them. Actually, let's just leave it surface. Lock the surface on the head. This is going to be the face of your eye. If I put this surface in a folder, call the folder eye controls. So we start by keeping things organized. And now put the folder in the middle of his head. So the rotation point is in the height of the middle of the head. This surface is going to be, of course, your eye. So let's put this four pixels forward. And as you see, it's overlapping the head, which is not always nice. So let's put it 4.01. So it's just above the surface. Doesn't glitch and it's visible. We're going to open and close the eyes by scaling it up and down. You don't want the eyes to be closing at the very bottom. You want them to be opening and closing at the center. So put this to eight. Now they're gonna blink from the center. However, the upper eyelid is bigger than the lower one. So let's still put this down a bit. I would say minus 2.5, something like this. I scale this down now. This is our eye. If we put it minus 1.7 to the right and duplicate this and put it 1.7 on the left. Yeah, this is not enough. Okay, let's go for two, minus two. I would say this is nice. We can scale them, just adjust them. I don't have a skin reference. You're probably going to use a skin reference to see how wide the pixels are so you can make the eyes proportional. I'm just doing it from the head right now, but the process is similar. Let's call this I. Now let's put the eyes in a folder, call it eyes Y. So you can just scale the folder once, but not scale individual eyes all the time. So if you scale this down, the eyes are going to blink. The reason why the custom rotation point didn't mess is because the eyes don't have a Y value. Let's say if the eyes were up here and we scaled this down, then you will get funky results. So the folder and the eyes need to be in the same heights. And it's all controlled by the eye control. So if I put this up and down, you can move the entire set of eyes up or down. So again, you should know the alpha glitch, so let's put these to 1%, make these minus 1%, so this is now visible through the head, but we need something in the back of his eyes. So let's add a new cube, invert it, call it inverted, so we know what it is. Log the inverted cube onto the eye. As you see, it should look pretty nice, except Except if I scale up the Z, you can see where the custom rotation point is. Let's just put this to 8. Oh, that's too much. 8, so now it's Right here, the eyes custom rotation point, minus 2.50. So let's give this one the same rotation point so the custom rotation points match. And if I put the render depth of this to minus 2, you will see that it made a nice cavern in the eyes. Now you're going to match this with your skin, but the color of my head is right here. So I want to copy this number, control plus C, and paste it in this number, control plus V. If I raise this up, I get this nice little area behind here. I want to duplicate this and put it on the other eye. So now I basically have two holes in the head, which are capable of blinking. The structure of my eyes, the rest is just to make them look nice. Let's add another surface, put it on the eye controls. Let's call it whiteness. So let's put this to minus two. So we get this white edge at the end. Let's just scale it down so it's only present in the eyes. Let's Okay, let's move it up a bit. I see it's miscentered. So with a simple slider control, I can now define the color of his eyes, which is usually just white. If you want pupils in there, of course, add a new cube, pupils, lock it on the eye control, and put it in a folder called the folder pupils, and shrink in this pupil down. Put the custom rotation point to zero, of course. Put its render depth to minus two or below. Like, I, I'm gonna go for minus three just to, to be safe. And if I position this in the eye now, add some mixed color so I can see it better. Now the pupil is in here. If I try to scale this, yeah, sure, it's going to disappear at some point. That's why I wanna change the custom rotation point to be on eight. So if I drag this out now, no matter how I scale it, the final point will always be at this side because the custom rotation point prevents it from shrinking from this side. Those two caverns are way too deep. Drag this whiteness closer, and uh, this Y and Z are not okay. I wanna copy the selected position. Now put everything to zero, because this is the pupil's folder's job, so it's right here. Uh, the X should be on zero in this one. The X is the pupil's job, so the X is controlled by the pupil, minus two, so now it's in the center. And if I duplicate this pupil, I will put it on the right. 
plus two. So these are your basic eyes now. If you want texture, of course, you can bronze for one. I'm gonna use the one from my facial rig, and uh, they're still red because of this mixed color. And as you see, they're grayscale now. If I wanna change the color, just go for the multiply one. If this is too dark, you can either add some RGB to make it whiter, or you can add some some HSB to make the color brighter, so it's your choice. Okay, yeah, where have I messed up? This whiteness needs to be on the eyes Y, so it scales with the eyes. Therefore, I should try to make it proportionally as correct as possible, because I don't want the sides to be scaled too much. Try to take up as less space, because if this were hanging off like so, and I stretched the eyes up, it would start poking out of the head very fast. So let's try to be as accurate as possible because we don't want this to be sticking out of the head. So now when you scale the eyes, they're going to scale proportionally. And this would be one eyelid, right and left, and this inverted would be the color here you see on my face ring. This is it, this is the inverted cube. Okay, let's add some eyebrows. Human body part, body of Steve. Why body of Steve? Because it can bend in both directions and we want that. Lock the body of Steve on the eyes Y. Call it eyebrow, this is gonna be our left eyebrow. Yeah, I messed up, this is the left one, this is the right one, but my left and right are mixed up now, so let's just go with this one. And uh, before moving the eyebrow, let's put it in a folder, call it eyebrows. Folders are great. Move this folder exactly four units forward, so now it's right on the edge here, and move it like, let's say, 1.15 up. The X is again taken care of by the eyebrow. Let's position it somewhere. This is my eyebrow. 90 degrees on the y-axis and now 90 degrees here because now I can move it up and down and it's not going to break. Now I want to scale this sucker down and position it on the x. If we want to move it up, let's move the entire folder up. And uh, I want to duplicate this left eyebrow and lock it on itself, call it slash on the timeline so you know not to click it. Reset the scale values to 1, reset all the position, reset everything basically. Also in the hierarchy options tick on bend so when I bend the first one they're both going to bend. Repeat the process, duplicate, lock. I would say that's it because now if I bend this first one they all bend and this functions like a nice eyebrow. If you want to adjust it you can try to mess with the Y so the length is different but I guess you don't really need it. Now select all of your eyebrows, go under the hair options and tick on color. So when you change the color of the first one, actually tick on color for this one as well and now when you change the color of the folder they are both going to change color. Now if I duplicate this left eyebrow and call it right eyebrow, turn this around minus 90 degrees and put it on the other side. This one is minus 3 point something this one is going to be plus three point something. So now when I select both of them, they're going to bend at the same time in two different directions. It matches our eyebrow. This is why the rotation is important. While the eyes are going to blink, this is going to happen. Well, there is one way around it, but it also messes something else up. So in the eyebrows, tick off scale. So now they won't scale anymore, meaning you would have a nice blink. So this functions now, but if you scale up the head, you will ruin the eyebrows, so you have to copy this number and, and scale the eyebrows by the same amount, and it will work. But it's something goofy, and this is what bothers people about my face rig. Let's add some rounded edges to the eyes. Add a cylinder rounded edge. This cylinder should be placed on the eyelid. It should be stretched, not resized. Now when I turn this around, it does something funny, but it's what I want. Exactly 8 units, I think. Oh no. See, the outlet is misplaced by 2.5, so let's put this to 10.5. If I put the render depth here to minus 1, just like the eyelids, and uh, put the alpha down, yeah, it does work, but we need to adjust this color here thing. So if I scale this up, it works nicely again. I do get this edge around here, so let's, uh, let's position this backwards a bit. Oh, oops, what have I done? Let's put it to minus 10. Not enough? Minus 50. Kai. Two hours later. So I was interrupted. Status update. We fixed this by putting it to minus 100 and scaling it up a bit. We gotta scale this whiteness up a bit just so it catches up with the rest of the eyes. We could scale down the Y to make it smaller and uh, duplicate it and put it on minus 10. Again, because the rotation point of the surface is delayed by 2.5, we gotta subtract 2.5 from minus 8 so we get minus 5.5. So now it's just in the center. Now, uh, we don't want to do this all over again, so let's uh, just delete the eyelid left and duplicate eyelid right to minus two, not, not two, and you should be all set. Of course, you could put this in a folder, 
call it eyelids lock it so no one touches it now if you want to scale the eyes up you can also just do that you can move the pupils by moving it left and right and you can also scale them make them smaller or bigger I would say the eyes are finished now the hard part is the mouth we can now close the eye controls as you see we have everything in here so pupils and the eyes which contain the eyelids which you shouldn't touch the whiteness we can just lock it and the eyebrows so basically you're going to animate the eyes the eyebrows and the pupils close this up now make another instance on the timeline of the surface mouth lock the mouth on the head and now again if I put this four units forward it's going to start glitching so let's put it to 4.01 so it just doesn't glitch and if I put it up scale it down to resemble a mouth now the mouth isn't going to be opening upwards it's mostly going to be opening downwards but not completely so let's go for zero now it's in the center but again we said mostly downwards so let's increase this to six or so is too much so let's go for five now it's gonna open like so so upwards but mostly downwards it. Let's position it somewhere. That's nice. I should probably put this in a folder because this is a component. The folder should just be something that contains that. Make a folder, call it XY because we're going to be scaling this to open it. But we can't be scaling it from there because you see something funny is going on. So let's select the mouth, copy the position and put it back to zero and paste the position on the mouth. We just basically transfer the position from the mouth to the folder. If I scale the folder now, it's going to function normally. But Sharpoint, how to make him smile and frown? Don't worry, I'll explain this too. Of course, if you want something bending, the best way is the body because it can bend both ways. Smiling or frowning. Make another instance of the body and uh, put it on the mouth. We have two mouths, this is confusing, so let's just... Uh, do this to this one so don't click on it now the body of Steve is what's going to be bending so let's make it stretch not resize because resizing will always resize it in that one particular axis so the Y for the mouth is up but the body is going to be turned sideways so the Y is going to be right so when I'm gonna scale up the Y the mouth are gonna go ah uh, and the body is gonna go uh we don't want that so stretching will always stretch it upwards no matter how it's turned turn this 90 degrees and as you see it's always keeping that uh, stretch if this was a resize, it would resize like so. But the stretch will always be stretch in that particular direction. So the Z is useless, we can put it back down to zero. 90 degrees of Y as well. So this now serves as a bend on my mouth. We want to position this 8 pixels to the right. I also put the custom rotation point. Oh no, not the Z. No, it is the Z. Wow. The Y should be 4. It's the same width as the, as the mouth. And the Y Z, I think, should be 1.25. So one and a quarter so this is basically has to do with math because the body is four pixels across and this whole surface is eight pixels so it's about a quarter less and it's it's math left because it should be placed in a folder called smile frown there we go let's give it some mixed color white so it matches the mouth let's put the mix percent back to zero let's copy this left and lock it on itself reset all of these values reset the position okay reset all of those this is the second component slash slash make it inherit bend and repeat this process uh, again I think three is enough it's reasonable if you bend the first one they are going to bend and you have a functional smiling frown also if you scale this up the smile frown is not going to break this is the desired effect this is what we wanted now select them mix color white uh, we're gonna mess with everything else later but for now I want to give a round edge to the end of the mouth so let's use the round edge again and lock it on this last part of of course make it stretch so it's always turned in the same way turn it around 90 degrees as you see we have a nice circle here oh 90 degrees I said 90 degrees 90 <laughs> scale down the Z 0 0.25 I think six pixels I think yep because the six pixels is the size of the upper body Let's put this to 1.2 Oh, 1.25, exactly. I'm so stunned sometimes. Now we scale up the Y to get this round edge we want. I'm gonna go for, for 0.5. So this looks like a soft edge. So this whole smile frown thing could just go to minus one and all of these components could go to alpha 1%. Now you can see through it. The mouth, X and Y could do the same. So let's go for minus one. Oh, oops, this is now minus two. So let's go for minus one. This is the parent. So the parent affects everything else. And we put this to 1%. So now we get this. And this is the smile left, so let's duplicate the smile left, right, put this to minus 90 degrees, so it's turned the other way, x8 should be x minus 8, so it's on the other side. If I scale up the mouth, ah, left and right works fine, perfect, and the left and right smile and frown also work. However, this looks awkward, and I really don't like it. I want to scale the mouth very small, and scale the smile and frown upwards, 
Now this is going to be a very, very sensitive function, so yeah, as you see the mouth look pretty nice. Let's delete the first frames and put these back. This is now your mouth. We need the inverted cube again, because we need an inside room for the mouth. Just lock it on the mouth. Think about it, every time you will move your mouth, this whole inside cube is going to be resizing like crazy and it might glitch through the head, it might do some very fine stuff. We don't want that. So why not just lock the eyes on the head instead? Uh, now we could give it a render depth of minus 2, so it's rendered before the mouth, so you can see through it. So now if I animate this mouth, this functions like a mouth. Now of course we're missing the teeth and the tongue, but that's very simple. Simply build it with cubes. These are the upper teeth, so let's put this to 8, so the custom rotation point is up here. So it's gonna be scaling from the top. Okay, we could also go for render depth of 8, like let's say you want to mess with the thickness of the teeth, you could just do this instead, so you don't have to move them around anytime, so you can customize the thickness as well. This is very handy, I should use this in my face rig. Put this in a folder, teeth upper, then put those in a folder, call it teeth. I might be too organized here, but it never hurts. I also resize the inner mouth, so the mouth isn't too long. So the teeth don't have to be too long. Now the teeth upper are done, and I could basically just duplicate this folder. Bottom, flip them around, 180 degrees, down like so. And if you want to scale the teeth, select all of your cubes, and put the Y to zero, and now put the folder up. So now the custom rotation point of the folder is up there. Lock the inside so don't accidentally click on them, but now if you want to scale the teeth, you can! One last thing is the tongue, which I never move at all, so let's just lock it in the mouth. Let's put this between the eyes and the mouth, and let's rename it to nothing. First of all, it has the functionality. Second of all, it makes things organized, just like my face rig. This is what I did. Now this cube, just call it tongue, and there are other ways, but I'm just going to scale it like so. And this is your fully functional face rig, believe it or not. The mouth are scalable. This is your edge, so if this happens, just uh, put the teeth up and scale them down a bit. It is working, although very sensitive, so be careful. So this is, if this happens, again, adjust the teeth. The mouth is fully functional, also opens and closes everything you need. This is a fully functional face rig and a full tutorial done by me. If you enjoyed this video, drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more. Show me some love, guys. These things ain't too easy. If you know anyone who needs to make his own face rig, recommend this video. I hope you found this useful and if you did, let me know in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and stay sharp.